Oh, hey. So, hey, my tip for the day is don't swing on plane. If you're trying to swing the club on plane, you're doing it all wrong. And as Hamlet said, there's method to my madness. So if you'd like to get inside the, the brain of a madman, see what this swing plane idea is all about, then by all means, stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. As you know, I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, but all the way through to the green for 18 holes because playing long and straight all day makes golf really fun. So if you'd like to hit it a little longer and straighter, lower your scores, then by all means, join us. Hit the subscribe button, like this video at the end if you got some benefit or some entertainment. And of course, leave a comment down below and nudge the YouTube algorithm just a little bit in my favor. All right, so if you've been watching the PGA pros on TV lately, you'll notice there's a lot of guys that are starting to kind of do a pre-shot, like a dress rehearsal, actually over the golf ball. And they're really starting to do moves like, you know, this or this. And they're really trying to establish getting their club and shaft on the correct plane and uh, maybe overcome some of the bad habits that they've been doing. Now, obviously, these guys are on tour. They're playing amazing golf, winning tons of money. So, of course, I'm going to get that argument on the comments saying, well, Steve, you're not on tour, and they are. I just think there's a better way of doing it. Now, uh, my mentor, Mike Austin, he always used to talk about the difference between swinging the meat and swinging the metal. So swinging the meat was all about how the body was going to move. Swinging the metal was all about what the club head was going to do. And I think it would be a lot easier for these players to find themselves automatically on the right plane going back if they put their body on the plane first. All right, so I've got my favorite hula hoop here. Just to show you a little exercise that I like to do to kind of illustrate how to swing the body on the right plane. So first, if I were to stand my normal posture here, and I'm gonna to try to get the base of my neck as centered inside the circle as I can. I'm hoping this is about right. Something like this. Now, if I was to do the typical PGA backswing hip action, you see, I'm going to move this way. And now you can see through the hoop. So my body is not winding up on the plane. In fact, I've taken the wheel and I have twisted it because you can see through the hoop now. The hoop is now pointing out to right field more. This, to me, makes it a little bit more difficult. You'll have to use the arms and wrists independently of what you're doing with the hips and torso in order to keep the club on that beautiful arc that we're trying for to hit the ball really straight every time. Instead, watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to tilt and turn a little bit more as Mike Austin used to prescribe to us, and that would look something like this. Now, from your perspective, the wheel has stayed two-dimensional. Let's do that again. You can't even see through it, hopefully. And I've wound up my body with more tilt and turn in the hips. You can see that my belt buckle is at a incline. My right hip is higher than the left. But what you don't see is you can't see through the hoop. So from the viewer's perspective, coming back up the line, it just appears to be one straight line. You can kind of see the motion of the hoop turning. Let me show you from the front what I'm doing here. So here I'm going to try to center myself right about here. And here's the wind up into the post, just like that. Now, the advantage I think this gives us compared to what other golfers and golf teachers are teaching 
when I do this motion going back and I get my body on a different plane, I've got to somehow correct that. And to correct that, I'm now going to have to turn in such a way that you can see through the hoop the other way as well. So I'm hoping that in that brief moment that my body gets back on the right plane at impact to hit the ball straight. And I think that's a little bit more problematic and a little bit more difficult to be consistent. So if you can get going back more this way, it makes it a lot easier to make the hoop spin the same way going through. And this puts us into the under position that Mike prescribed. Just like that. From where we can use Mike's free release to hit the ball long and straight. Um, I hope the hula hoop made a really neat demonstration for you and perhaps allowed you to see the advantages uh, and, and accuracy of using his style of pivot. All right, let me swap out the hoop for the driver. And now that I've kind of got that committed to muscle memory, let me see if I can try to turn my body as prescribed by the hula hoop. Here we go. All right, that was a good long and straight shot. So maybe for your next golf investment, it would not be the worst idea in the world to run out to the toy store and grab a $8 hula hoop, practice that with a mirror behind you, practice learning how to wind the meat up on the plane where the club is much more naturally will follow it. And I think that's the easiest way to get your swing on plane. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve and I'm coming to you from Moore Park, California. And as usual, hey, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.